Tree maps are a great addition to any report. They're useful for creating things like interesting buttons, but they're also really good at creating things like variance charts. So what we're gonna do in this tutorial is create three different types of basic tree map, and then two more advanced ones. One showing you how to create a variance tree map, because negative numbers don't work so well. And we're also gonna look at a fixed value. So to begin with, the third row, last column in your visualizations, is the tree map. Your tree map has four main sections. We've got group for our overarching data. We've got details to subdivide that data. We've got values for how big each square is gonna be. And we've got our tool tips for additional information. To start me off, I'm gonna pop my group in. I'm gonna have from my region table, my region name into the group. And the size of each section is going to be my purchase table quantity. What this does is it gives a percentage of your value as a percentage of the visual. Southeast being around about 25% gets 25% of the visual. If I resize the visual, those are consistent. So that's one way to use it. A more common way that you may see these used is as colorful buttons. Instead of having my quantity into the values, I'm gonna put the region name into the group and into the values. That counts my regions, and because there's one of each, it gives me all the same size. It's also worth noting if you are using a table with duplicated values, all you need to do is go over to your values section and change it to count distinct. Finally, you can create your chart to show trends. So in here, I'm gonna drag region name into the group. And then from the purchase table, the quantity in to the values. But instead of leaving it like that, what I would like to do is change the color based on the performance. Click on the format roller, down to data colors, click on advanced controls. You have three options in here. Color scale does an automatic percentage, 0% being the lowest value, 100% being the largest value. Rules means that you can choose the limitations yourself by hard coding them in. And field value is if you've got a measure pre-written which can choose the colors for you. I'm just gonna go with a basic color scale. It's gonna default to the same value. So I'm gonna change that from count a region name to my quantity table, to my purchase table, and I'm gonna take the quantity. In here, I want three colors, so I'm gonna tick on diverging, and I'm gonna change what I consider the minimum. I don't want it to take the lowest value, so I'm gonna set it to custom and choose zero. That way, if the lowest value is 120, it's gonna treat zero as the lowest value, not 120. My default color, I'm gonna have a red, my center color, I'm gonna have a yellow, and my highest color, I'm gonna have a green. Click OK, and you'll see that it's now based off of this color scale with the lowest value getting more red and the highest value getting more green. The nice thing about using color scale is it does, well, scale. So as you apply filters, this color system will rejig. But what if we wanted something slightly different? What I'd like to do is I would like to compare to last year. How did all of these do last year? To do this, I'm going to just duplicate my chart. And I'm going to create myself a quick measure. You can create a quick measure in any table. If you have a measure table, great. If not, go to whichever table you think is most appropriate. I'm gonna to go to the region table, right click and choose new quick measure. In here, I'm gonna go for my calculation and I'm gonna scroll down until I find my time intelligence. And I'm gonna go for my year over year change. The base value is gonna be my purchase table quantity. And remember, if you do want to have something other than the sum, you can click on the three little dots to change the aggregate. The date that I'm interested in could be my purchase table purchase date but I've got a calendar table, so I'm gonna keep my calendar table, calendar date, and pop that in here. 
I'm looking at the difference of one year, so I'm just going to leave one in there. Click OK. And I'm going to add this into my visual. So I want to see my year over year change. Replace the quantity with my quantity year over year percentage. The problem here is there's no filters, so it doesn't know what we're looking at. So I'm going to create myself a little visual on the side. I'm going to have a little slicer, fifth row, first column. And into this slicer, I'm going to have my calendar table, financial year. I'm going to go for the financial year that has data, so I'm going for 2020 slash 2021. Interestingly though, I only appear to have north, and this is due to a limitation with the tree map. Negative values aren't supported. So how can we deal with this? Well, let's go back to whichever table we created the measure in, right click and this time choose new measure. Sadly there isn't a quick measure that can do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ABS YOY year over year equals a, B, S, absolute. So all the negative numbers will become positive numbers. So I'm going to pop in my newly created measure, quantity of year over year percentage. And I'm going to put that into my visual instead. Get rid of my quantity and add my A, B, S year over year in there. Nearly there. It's nice to have all of our regions back, but I don't know which ones are negative and which ones are positive. So, to change that, I'm going to go to my little format roller, down to data colours. And you'll notice that unlike before, we have no option for formatting. This is because the details section works a little bit like the legend. And as you'll know, you can't have legend and conditional formatting. I'm going to move my region name up into the group, go back into the format roller, down to data colours, and there we have our advanced controls. Give that a click. And here I'm going to go for not the color scale, but the rules. And I'm going to say, look, if you are below zero as a number, then I'm going to have you as red. Add another rule. If you're zero as a number or above, up to infinity, I'm going to have green. And you'll see you've now got your advanced control. Click on advanced controls, use the drop down and choose rules. The based on field, if we scroll down to our table, we don't want the ABS year over year because they're all positive. So we're going to go with the quantity year over year, our original quick measure. I'm going to say where the number, not the percentage, is less than zero, I want it to be red. Add a rule. And where the number is zero up to, and I'm going to delete the zero so it's up to the maximum, will be green. Click OK. And we can now tell which ones are positive and which ones are negative. If you want to see the actual percentage, go over to your ABS YOY, go up to your measure tools and click on this little percentage symbol. And that will give us the percentages. If I wanted to see this as a number instead, I've got my original measure. Nice and easy to change this back to a number. If I copy this, right click on the region table, choose new measure, paste it in, delete the percentage symbol because I don't want it as a percentage, go down to my divide and just get rid of the word divide. We don't need the divide. If we're not using divide, we also don't need the alternate result. So we're going to get rid of the comma previous year. 
So that's going to do my sum of quantity minus the previous year. Hit return. And now if I add that into my visual, I can either have it as the values or I can have it as my tool tip. And that'll give me the change. The final one I want to look at is fixed value. One of my delegates messaged me and said, hey Sam, I love tree maps. They look great and I love using these colorful buttons. But why can't I have them all the same size, but still have the number there? So what they wanted was they wanted it to have the numbers, like the above tree map, but they wanted the size as if they were counting each of the fields. Now this is a bit of a hack, so it's not going to do everything you want, but the way we do it is we create this column, the sum of quantity, as a calculated column. So if I go to the family table, right click and choose new column. Because calculated columns produce data, they can be used in the grouping and detail section. So I'm going to call this sum of quantity and the measure is going to be sum of quantity. Now, if you know anything about row context and filter context, you'll know this returns 74,415 or the total each time. Calculated columns have no filters by default. Calculate will allow us to filter this calculation for each of our families. Hit return. If I look in data view now, I can see that I have a new column with those calculations. These calculations will only be re-performed whenever the data is refreshed. They are not going to be affected by other filters. And here I'm going to pop over. I'm going to add my sum of quantity into the details section. Now, of course, there's a one to one relationship between this column and the family column. So we're effectively grouping it by its own value. And that's it. They're now all the same size, but they have the accurate totals on them. I hope you've enjoyed this wise out tutorial. If you have, do give us a like and consider leaving a comment down below if you've got any questions or if you're planning on using this. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.